Okay, would everyone please stand for a moment of silence and pledge the flag? And remember those victims in New York City, please. Senator Benton, resolution accepting and confirming the report of the apportionment of the mortgage tax for the period April 1st, 2017 through September 30th, 2017, as computed from a statement filed by the county clerk. Second. Discussion. Roll call. On a sec? I mean, yes. Sorry. I am here. Terrible? Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Email? Agnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Hemnitz, Kulasek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Biro, Gresham. 21 ayes. Number two. Legislator Benton, resolution approving the release of the county's interest <coughs> in and to a certain deed sale parcel to the previous owner of record pursuant to section five, paragraph B1 of local law number two of 2010. Second. Discussion. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Abstain. Ekis? Fagione? Hines? Hemnitz, Pulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Bureau, Russia. 20 ayes, one abstention. Number three. Legislators Benton and Agnostakis, Pulisek, and Dillard. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature for the County of Orange, New York, opposing electric and natural gas delivery rate increases proposed by Central Hudson Gas and Electric Corporation. Second. Discussion? Yes. Legislator Hines added. Legislator Paduk added. Welcome. Cool. Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Fagione? Hines? Hemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Bureau? Russia. 21 eyes. Number four. 
Legislators for Scavage and Terminal. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Public Works Airport to accept funds from the New York State Department of Transportation pursuant to section 99-H of the general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Vote for it. Added. John Bureau added. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Padu, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Gresham. 21 ayes. Six. Legislators Benton and Benelli. Resolution making a supplemental appropriation to the 2017 Orange County budget for the Orange County Department of Public Works, Environmental Facilities and Services, pursuant to section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Yes, yeah. Yeah, for this uh, number six and number seven, I'm going to be voting no. And it's not so much that I object uh, to the, the intent behind it, sewer line ex extension and purchasing of equipment, that's not my reason. And my also not the reason is that it's gonna be financed out of the fund balance of the Orange County Sewer District. That, that very well may have merit both those ideas. The reason why I'm gonna know, it's a way to show a protest of not having uh, the, the democratization of the sewer district, as I call it. And I, uh, you know, for years I've been an advocate of of having them run their own sewer district rather than the county. And even, I was willing to take, uh, to support something even much less uh, a standing committee, advisory committee. So when it comes to, to expenditures on behalf of Orange County Sewer District, we could at least say that the oversight local board of, 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 of people that use the district give us a recommendation on their own ultimately their own taxation. And that's not there yet, so that's why I'm voting no. Okay, further discussion? Yes, Legislator Bureau? Yeah. Okay. Yes, Legislator Raymond? Yeah. Thank you, okay. I, I, I totally agree with uh, Mr. Berkman. I'm gonna vote yes for a different reason, but I agree with Mr. Berkman. I really think that it's time that we think about self-governance in the district. You know, only five of us down there really live and work in that part of that district yet. The budget's voted on by all 21. I think it's time to do it. You know, the first one, is, as you suggested, implied in between, is how do you define participation? And that's going to be the battle, but I think you're right, Jim. But I don't want to take away the funding that needs there, so I agree with your point. Yes, Carter. I'll be voting yes, of course, for it. But it would seem to me that if you have no on it, then I should vote no on any fixed thing that would be going on with County Route 6 because I don't use County Route 6 and it shouldn't be people use it. So as long as the county owns something, I think that they have responsibility for the Okay, Legislator Angus I just had to chime in. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I had to defend Mr. Berkman. Uh, although I usually agree always with my good friend, Myrna Kimnitz, um, I think the distinction is that when you have County Route 6 that goes through, I don't know, Middletown area, that is available to be used by every single citizen that is in Orange County. And that's why we vote as a legislature for that. Then the difference here is there is a sewer district that is only used by people living within that sewer district. So I'll agree with Mr. Burke and Mr. Amel. Uh, the democratization of that should be accomplished at some point. Those people should determine if they want to spend uh, money uh, for their particular uh, project that they have going there, not people living outside that cannot use that district. Thank you very much. Okay, roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? No. Emo? Yes. Agnostakis? Benton? Berkman? No. Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? No. DeSalvo? Ekis? Baggione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell? Padu? No. Skevich? Sullivan? No. Bureau? Yes. Gresham? 16 eyes by the nose. Number seven. 
Legislators Benelli, Benton, and DeSalvo. Resolution making a supplemental appropriation to the 2017 Orange County budget for the Orange County Department of Public Works, Environmental Facilities and Services, pursuant to section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Steve? Yes. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? No. Amo? Yes. Nagastakis? Benton? Berkman? No. Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? No. DeSalvo? Gikas? Baggione? Hines? Kemnitz? Kulasek? O'Donnell? Fidu? No. Ruskevich? Sullivan? No. Vero? Gresham? 16 ayes, 5 no. Okay, number 8. Legislators Purdue, Kulasek, Benton, O'Donnell, Berkman. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Parks, Recreation, and Conservation to implement and fund in the first instance 100% of the federal aid and state Marcuselli program aid eligible costs of a transportation federal aid project and enter into supplemental agreement number two with the New York State Department of Transportation for costs of the construction and construction inspection work for the Ar Heritage Trail extension pursuant to section 99-H of the General Municipal Law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? All yes. Legislator Pagino. Thank you, Chairman. <coughs> With this vote on the Heritage Trail, a trail which I've actually uh, ridden my bike on and jogged on as well, I am in full support of this. I just want to remind all legislators that the Heritage Trail is being extended easter to the eastern edge. Remember, the western edge of Orange County does not end in Middletown. It ends in Fort Jervis, and I would fully support everyone coming together and finding a way of getting that Heritage Trail across the mountain from Middletown, eventually over into Deer Park and Fort Jervis. Thank you. Okay, Legislator Berkman. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I like a big vision, <laughs> so thank you for announcing it. Uh, it's been 20 years since the county government has promised the people in Middletown or Wallkill that the Heritage Trail would be connected and I'm very pleased that we're on the threshold of actually implementing it. And I, I appreciate those that support the finances of doing this. Uh, I really have only one regret that we don't have a parks commissioner. We need to have a parks commissioner to, to take care of our system. We have a big, fine system and we need that. The leadership there to to keep it as good as it is and to make it improve make improvements on it as well yes observe candidates i uh, heartily agree and um there is a grant that was available this year and is coming available next year it's called tiger it's from the New York State Department of Transportation. And one of the things that it looks for to fund are trails, walking instead of riding in a car, biking. So I had suggested that we look at that grant. It's a pool of over $500 million from the state. Smallest grant is $5 million with a 1.6 match. So if we get busy, maybe for next October 31st, we could Okay, I'm sorry, let's clear back. Thank you. There is a hiking trail that runs along the top of the ridge if you really want to look at the maps. I was going to have to hike that with Mr. Berkman one time, uh, but we haven't had the opportunity to do that. Unfortunately, I don't think there's an abandoned rail line that runs in that direction, that like the Heritage Trail that we've been able to take advantage of, but uh, there's an active rail line, that's for sure. Okay, roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagastakis? Benton? Berkman? Yes. Benelli? <coughs> Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Baggione? Hines? Kemnitz? Kulasek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Vero? Russia? 21 eyes. Okay, hey, number nine. Legislators Vero, Turnbull, Benton, and Nagastakis. Resolution authorizing the Orange County Commissioner of Public Works to contract with certain towns and villages for snow and ice control on certain county roads pursuant to section 135A of the highway law. Discussion? Okay, roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Benton? 
Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Pulisek, O'Donnell, the Duke, Riskevich, Sullivan, Bureau, Gresham. 21 ayes. Okay, number 10. Legislators Paduke, Bureau, Benton, and O'Donnell. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Public Works Airport to accept funds from the New York State Department of Transportation pursuant to section 99-H of a general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Emo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Fegione? Hines? Chemnitz, Pulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Bureau, Russia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 11. 11A, I'm oh, sorry, it's 11A, receiving five. Okay, number 11. Legislators Bonasek, Fegione, Ekis, DeSalvo, Benton, and Hines. Local law introductory number four of 2017. A local law amending Local Law 5 of 2017, repealing the wireless communication surcharge authorized by Article 6 of the County Law of the State of New York and imposing the wireless communication surcharges pursuant to the authority of New York State Tax Law Section 186G. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? No. Emo? Yes. Anagnostakis? No. Benton? No. Berkman? No. Benelli? Cheney, Dillard, no. DeSalvo, Ekis, <coughs> Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, no. Ruskevich, Sullivan, no. Biro, Russia. 15 eyes, 6 no's. And number 12. Legislators Ekis and Fagione. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Emergency Services Fire Services to accept an appropriated grant from the New York State Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services pursuant to Section 99-H of a general municipal law and Section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Yes. All Republicans also? Roll call. Anasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Emo? Yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Bresch. 21 eyes. Number 13. Legislators DeSalvo and Paduk. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Emergency Services, Police Services, to accept and appropriate grant funds from the State of New York Governor's Traffic Safety Committee, pursuant to Section 99-H of the General Municipal Law and Section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? All dams? Okay. Roll call. Anasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Gresham. 21 eyes. Number 14. Legislators DeSalvo and Paduk. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Sheriff's Office, District Attorney's Office, and County Attorney's Office, and the Departments of Probation, Emergency Services, Emergency Management to submit grant applications to the United States Departments of Justice, Homeland Security, and New York State Departments of Homeland Security and Emergency Services and Transportation for Law Enforcement and Public Safety and Emergency Services Communication Purposes, pursuant to Section 99-H of the General Municipal Law and Section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? All Republicans? Okay. Okay. Roll call. Honest? Turnbull, yes. Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Bresch, 21 eyes. Okay, number 15. Legislators, DeSalvo, and Paduk. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Sheriff's Office, District Attorney's Office, the County Attorney's Office, <coughs> and the Departments of Probation, Social Services, Mental Health, Medical Examiner's Office, and Medical and Emergency Services, Emergency Management to submit applications for grant programs offered by the New York State Division of Criminal Justice Services pursuant to Section 99-H of the General Municipal Law and Section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion. Roll 
Onisek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nakasakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Fagione? Hines? Hemnitz? Kulasek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Bureau? Russia. 21 ayes. Senators Benton and Berkman, resolution authorizing the county executive to submit the action plan for <coughs> FY 2018 to the Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, for the purposes of applying for and accepting certain federal funds for the Home Investment Partnership Program home, pursuant to section 99-H of a general municipal law. Second. Discussion? Mr. Martin? Okay. Okay. Is that Okay, Katie, I, all Republicans, I'm sorry. Okay. Did you want to say something, Jim? No, just say it. Okay. Okay, Michael, everybody out of roll call. Honasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Emo? Yes. Annette Gustafkis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Diller, DeSavo, Ikes, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduka, Scavage, Sullivan, Bureau, Russia, 21 eyes. Okay, number seven. Legislators Ikes and Berkman. Resolution authorizing the county executive to submit the action plan for FY 2018 to the Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, for the purposes of applying for and accepting certain federal funds for the Urban County Entitlement Program Community Development Block Grant Program, CDBG, pursuant to Section 99-H of a general municipal law. Second. Discussion. All Dems. All Republicans. Independents. Okay. Roll call. Onisek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Diller, DeSavo, Ikes, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Scavage, Sullivan, Vero, Gresham. 21 eyes. Okay. Legislators Ikes and Benton, resolution authorizing the county executive to submit the action plan for FY 2018 to the Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, for the purposes of applying for and accepting certain federal funds for the Emergency Solutions Grant, ESG, pursuant to Section 99-H of a general municipal law. Second. Discussion. All them. All Republicans and independents. Roll call. Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Diller, DeSavo, Ikes, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Vero, Gresham. 21 eyes. 19. Legislators Chemnitz and Sullivan, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Mental Health to accept and appropriate funds from the New York State Office of Mental Health pursuant to Section 99-H of the General Municipal Law and Section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Yes. Legislator Kulasek had it. Onisek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSavo? Ikes? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Vero? Gresham? 21 eyes. Okay, number 20. Legislators Chemnitz and Sullivan, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Health to appropriate second year budget period funds from the New York State Department of Health pursuant to section 99-H of a general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Onisek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ikes? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Bureau? Gresham? 21 eyes. And number 21. Legislators Turnbull, Benton, Chemnitz, and Sullivan, an act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to create HVAC technician at the Orange County Department of Residential Health Care Services pursuant to section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Emo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Diller? DeSalvo? Ikes, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Bureau, Russia. 21 eyes, Mr. Chairman, and the desk is clear. Okay, first speaker up is Betty Ann Yaros, petition to the legislature.
afternoon, everyone, and thank you for the opportunity to address this group. I'm currently the president of the Orange County Democratic Women, and I'm here today with a group of my associates to bring some information forward that we found, as, that we developed as a result of commentary that we heard from voters at large. And that is a general dissatisfaction with the behavior of many of you here in this legislature. And that behavior is that our own democratic group, the minority, do not have the opportunity to present their point of view or to hold statutory positions on committees any longer. We find issue with that because while it's your privilege, it is also an issue that not everyone in Orange County is well represented. So therefore, today we're going to present our findings, which include a petition that we solicited in a bipartisan fashion so that we have Republicans as well as Democrats, blanks, independents. Everyone signed, especially those, particularly those who were concerned about this issue and having full representation and full voice. The second point is that as we've talked about the legislative issues and some of the concerns at the federal level, we've also talked to the clergy here in Orange County. And as a result, we have a letter from several clergymen that we will also present to you. And that is regarding the issue of immigration, where there is a concern about treating people properly who are immigrants in this country. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to my associates who will now present our findings. Thank you very much. I'm waiting for my name Mary to call so I can start the clock. Those are coming up as a group, I'm sorry. Good afternoon. I've been here. I'm sorry. Um, I've been here many times before and I've spoken on this issue, but I've been asked to speak on it as a representative of Orange County Democratic Women. Why do Orange County taxpayers need a petition demanding representative government? Because we've been watching our legislature and we're angry. When the Orange County Legislature started its 2017 session, the majority party chose Legislative Chairman Steve Brescia to lead the legislature. In making appointments to different committees are involved in setting policy and budgets. Mr. Brescia immediately used his position to appoint only Republicans to chair statutory committees. The power of a committee chair is such that they get to decide what happens in their committee and thus what items make it to the floor of the legislature for all 21 legislators to eventually vote on. Mr. Brescia's actions placed all the power in Orange County government within one party. The Democratic leader reacted to the removal of Democrats from leadership roles by pointing out that this was not shared, what shared government looks like. But that was party politics and it was an abuse of power. He expressed frustration that removing Democrats from key roles was not in the public's best interest, as many of them have expertise in different areas. He said politics should not determine who gets to control the committee and the legislative agenda. Here's Mr. Brescia's response. Quote, let me tell you, there's 20 town boards in the town county of Orange, and probably 16 or 17 of them are controlled by Republicans and one city council, the city of Port Jervis, and that city even voted for Donald Trump. You, Democratic caucus leader, keep bringing up that Democrats don't have enough representation. If you want to play this dance, we'll play this all year. Quote unquote from the Orange County Legislative Transcript January 2017 meeting. Instead of addressing this issue with respect, Mr. Brescia turned it into a setup for gridlock. When any individual in any party abuses their power, it is the people who become the victims. Orange County residents deserve better than this attitude. They deserve government that represents everyone in Orange County. Throughout this session, we have witnessed other occasions that have been disturbing, and rather than personalize each incident, we chose a more respectful way to make our point. A petition has circulated so that people from all political parties can sign it. It demands that once elections are over, legislators adopt good government practices. People deserve a legislature that governs in a way that regardless of who is sitting in those seats in January, the priority is to represent all the residents, not just the majority <coughs> Republican Party.
just for the record, just for the record, it's not a I don't disagree with the comments made, but for the record, there is a third party. I'm the independent party representative, and I do chair a committee, the Human Services Committee of the North Carolina Legislature. I'm not a Republican. I don't like to be painted with that brush. Some of them are nice, but I don't like to be painted with that brush. Good afternoon. I'm Diane Dzinski. Here's the petition. We, the undersigned, being residents and taxpayers in Orange County, are angered by the recent behavior witnessed in the Orange County government. The legislature and the county executive, the county executive's office, have demonstrated an abuse of representative government, both in their behavior and their remarks. There have been comments by the chairman of the county legislature and by the county executive, which disrespect their colleagues and members of the public. Our government's job is to represent all of Orange County residents. Orange County taxpayers deserve a county government that operates in a professional manner that represents all the people in the county, regardless of their party or beliefs. To rebuild faith in county government, including the executive and legislature branch, the undersigned taxpayers urge our representatives to adopt a resolution with the following key points. Further, we expect that every legislator and county administrative office signs on to it. The undersigned request that legislative powers be shared based on qualifications and not partisanship. That the business of county government be completely transparent. That the public has the opportunity to address issues before they are decided. That there is openness about appointments to the committees, about consultants, and about hiring staff to ensure there is proper vetting, avoidance of conflicts of interest, and nepotism. That conflicts of interest, or even the perception of such, are openly disclosed. That staffing vacancies are filled based on qualifications and experience. That openings on committees that accept volunteers are better advertised so that the public knows how to apply. That information is provided to all lawmakers well in advance of any required action to ensure that decisions are based on all relevant facts. And lastly, that each legislator has the time to review all relevant facts prior to casting a vote. Thank you. Elizabeth Keeston, same issue. I'm Elizabeth Christen. I'm a New England resident, and I also serve on the OPD Delegation Committee. Each day, we can't wait to hear you. Each day, our immigrant neighbors wake up in fear. Among other things, they fear the potential of deportation, immigration rates, loss of jobs, and that their children won't be safe in their classrooms. We, the undersigned, represent a broad base of interfaith leaders in Orange County who believe it is important to bring the moral force of religion to the discussion about immigrants. The Old Testament tells us, the stranger who sojourns with you shall be with you as the natives among you, and you shall love them as yourself, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. In the New Testament, Jesus tells us, to welcome the stranger, and what you do to the least of my brother, you do unto me. The Quran tells us that we should serve God and do good to orphans, those in need, neighbors who are near, neighbors who are strangers, the companion by your side, the wayfarer that you meet, and those who have nothing. Hindu scripture tells us the guest is a representative of God. We call attention to these to remind our secular leaders of the moral foundations that shape public policy. The cornerstone of our democracy is to promote religious liberty, uphold the human and constitutional rights of all people without shame or stigma, to avoid oppression and to uphold human dignity, including 
the marginalization <laughs> in our society. Each person is made in the image of God. Our country was built by immigrants. They have always been and still are vital and essential contributors to the community. The fabric of our society is knit together with shared threads. For these reasons, we urge you and your colleagues to resist participation in immoral and unconstitutional executive actions concerning immigration enforcement. Instead, we urge you to enact policies that enable families and communities to remain together and to help equip them to nurture their children in healthy and safe environments. Therefore, we respectfully request that you, like our neighbors in Newburgh, Kingston, and elsewhere are doing, our local county, state, and federal elected officials adopt sanctuary welcoming city policies that reflect our collective ideals of protecting the human and civil rights of all individuals, regardless of, um, of their immigration status, county of origin, religion, ethnicity, race, sexual orientation, and gender. Don, do you want to read? Is the next speaker? Yes, it's just going to hear Don, uh, Blauweiss, is that you? Good afternoon. Uh, the only part that remains are the signatures of the various clergy here. Respectfully, Reverend Bob uh, Adderley, pastor, uh, Scotchtown Presbyterian Church, Middletown. Uh, the Reverend Susan, um, sorry about these names, Chupungo, sorry, I can't pronounce it all. all. Um, Goshen uh, United Method Church, uh, Goshen, Pastor Rolf, uh, Rolfi El, uh, Eldio, Warwick Reformed Church, Reverend Peter Johnson, thank goodness for Peter Johnson, <laughs> um, Denton Presbyterian Church, New, Ham New Hampton, Reverend David uh, Calvin Kingsley, uh, First Presbyterian Church, Goshen, the Reverend Aaron Moore, Pastor, First Presbyterian Church, Chester, <coughs> and Reverend Louis uh, Redondo, Seventh-day uh, Adventist, Monroe. I have another one. Uh, Scott Martens, Public Health and Safety. address uh, last month's CPV and Millennium Vote. Um, I first want to thank Mr. Turnbull. Uh, thank you so much for your leadership um, and finally bringing this to the floor for the legislature. Uh, it meant a lot to us, to all of us who have been working a really long time to try to get uh, a vote by everybody. I wish everybody had shown up and voted, but you didn't. Um, also want to thank Mr. Berkman for writing a resolution uh, that was, it was nonpartisan, um, and all it asked was for the state agencies that are purposed to protect us to do their job. That's all it was. A non binding resolution to ask the Department of Health and the Attorney General to look into this a little bit further. It required nothing of you. Nothing. No county money. Nothing but just your support your show of support for the people that you're supposed to be representing, that you're looking out for them and looking out for their best interest because this process has been marred by controversies at the very beginning. Um, I really, I still don't understand a no vote on this. And, and maybe one of you could respond to my, one of my emails or one of my phone calls and tell me why. Why you voted no. It just still doesn't, does not make any sense to me. Um, 
simple. Just, yes, let's let the State Department of Health look into this a little bit further. Yes, let's let the Attorney General look into the allegations of corruption. The indictment has already been passed down, multiple indictments. I, I put the information in your guys' hands. All you had to do was read it. It was facts. I didn't give you my own opinion. Right? But you still voted no. Every Republican and the Independent, I won't forget about you. See, Independents. So, um, <laughs> uh, Roseanne Sullivan understood the need to protect the people, and Chris Ekus did, and Ms. Cummins did. They stood up and said, yeah, let's, let's look into this. But every single Republican did it. Mr. Gresham, I don't know what he felt because he left. And Mr. Cheney didn't show up. And a lot of you just abstained. Why would you abstain? I mean, the only, re the only conflict of interest would come if it was a no-go. I mean, doesn't that just prove that you're kind of not judicious enough to come up with a, a non-biased opinion on the public health and safety? Issue? Since when is this a, a, a partisan issue? It's fine a sec. Since when is that a partisan issue? Public health and safety. Um, it, it just couldn't have been more more apparent that this was all political and passed down from probably the top. And disappointing, really disappointing for all the people who worked really hard. Hello. Uh, I want to thank the, the same people Scott thanked. I, I applaud Scott's efforts to um, speak to you people. Um, I'm feeling a little under the weather, not physically, but just mentally, with the fact that I have friends in Pennsylvania where they will put in 100 to 150 wells a year to start this plan. And I, I dare any of you to come over there and meet the people that I know and see what they go through with their water totally destroyed, getting buyouts from Cabot Oil to shut their mouths. They can't sell their houses, they can't take a shower, they can't drink a cup of coffee in their house. They get water trucked in from the Susquehanna River. This is a fact. Water trucked in from the river. They chip in to buy a truck so that the neighborhood can get water to their house. Now what isn't sure is, will the ammonia tank erupt? Will the diesel tank erupt? Will the Millennium Pipe that's supposed to go through our creeks destroy my water in my house on Gardnerville Road? We don't know that. But since I've started learning about fracking, I've spent many, many hours reading and watching videos by scientists who understand a lot more than anybody in this room. Jim Hansen, Bill McKibben. I'm reading a book right now called Farewell to Ice. And I dare you to wonder what's gonna happen when New York City is underwater. This plant will add to climate change. Please don't tell me that you don't believe in climate change. The storm we had the other day, which was on the five year anniversary of Sandy, was enough for anybody with a brain to look out the window and say, this isn't normal. No rain for weeks on end, and then a giant storm with winds knocking down trees and flooding Livingston Manor. This is not me getting excited about some stupid myth. This is the planet we're talking about. This is planet Earth. Extinction is happening. Droughts are happening. The Midwest was a dust bowl years ago, and they're projecting that that will be exasperated by climate change. We have a moment of silence for somebody driving a truck down a path and killing people. That is a horrible event. What this guy is talking about is your health and your safety. Do you care about your children's water? Hey, I can hear you. Come speak to me outside. Sir. 
What? He's mumbling about what's this guy talking about. I'm talking about our future on planet Earth. If you don't believe in climate change, you shouldn't be in a governing body. Thank you. Martens, Minasink. A study that came out this week found that climate change is going to be responsible for millions of deaths and suffering. Millions of deaths and suffering. It is a public health emergency. CPV is going to greatly exacerbate this, and it's going to take back all the progress that New York State has promised to stop climate change. You know, I vote regularly, but I've never been directly involved in politics before this year. But the construction of CPV in my town has changed all of that. This has been an eye-opening experience. Coming to the legislature meetings, having my husband communicate, or have no response from you. And, you know, I grew up in a Republican family. I registered as an independent at 18 years old. For 19 years, that was my party, and last month I changed to become a Democrat. Um, the vote last month against health and safety, this non-binding resolution supporting the welfare of the people, cemented that the Republicans are the party of the special interests, corporation, and backroom deals. Their Democrats are the party of the people. I am so grateful, Mr. Berkman, Mr. Turnbull, Ms. Sullivan, Mr. Ekis, Ms. Chemnitz, for coming out and supporting the welfare of the people. I appreciate your vote, Mr. Dillard, but your support of Republican candidates, I believe, is a stain on your legacy and you've let down your constituents. I hope that in the future, this legislature will prioritize the welfare of the people above all else. Thank you. Thank you.